So, Le Mans Ultimate has arrived. Earlier this week it was released in the form of early access. Everyone's saying this is Motorsport Games' last chance to make a credible racing game. So, understandably, under a lot of scrutiny, my first impressions video is a little bit later than everyone else's, so sorry about that. But, no waffle. If you want to see my overall thoughts, go to the end of the video. But if you want to see what I thought of it in real time, then watch all of it. So, without further ado, enjoy. I want to quickly read it as well anyway. It's early access, so I think quite a few people maybe are over expecting. There is stuff that's not quite finished yet, so it's not in the game. So if you skim read this... Oh, wait there. I've got this. Oh, this goes cold. P-Motor 2.5 as seen as R-Factor 2, so that's... Uh, I felt it last night. It is, it's very similar to R-Factor 2 in the feeling. I'm using the same SimiQ profile. Uh, I'm using the same pedal settings, you know, the, the in-game settings you'll see in a bit is very similar to R-Factor 2. It's also using the new online feature, race control, which we tried out on R-Factor 2 a few months ago, which actually worked quite well. And yeah, I think they're just going for the early access approach to basically let the community steer the game in the direction they want it to go. And they'll be on standby to fix any bugs or make any improvements that the community wants to make. Which is fair enough. I mean, I'm pretty sure ACC did that back in the day. So I think they could, yeah, they said they're going to have like these feedback events for people to, yeah, give the feedback to make it better. So again, pretty standard early access stuff, really. All the things that you would like to see now, and I think that's why people are over expecting, because a lot of this stuff's not in the game now. That's why I think today, I think today people are going to slate it and people are not going to be happy. Which I guess is somewhat fair enough, but like a lot of this stuff's going to come on later. But I think the bare bones, of, from what I've seen, the bare bones is actually not too bad. Some areas for work, safety car, full cost yellow, slow zones are critical parts of endurance racing, driver time limits for weekend, for race weekend and online formats. Yeah, I did hear that there's no driver time limit or driver swap functionality, I think. So yeah, a series like Le Mans Virtual Series where you do one driver does a stint, gets out of the car, teammate goes in, that can't happen at the minute. So I think that's gonna, again, it's gonna be something that comes in the future. But yeah, at the minute it's uh, not there. Okay, I think, yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting just to see where they're gonna go with it, what they've actually got at the minute. As I say, I think a lot of people will be underwhelmed, but that's what you have that's what you get when you hype up a game and then it's early access but i'm not blaming them i'm just i'm just saying it you know people will like slate it today i think right i'm gonna go through settings and stuff later i'm just gonna get straight into some driving now uh, that's the other thing i found out yesterday the loading times for especially le Mans's bigger track is quite long so yeah. Moments later. Yesterday it was like, it took three to four minutes to load up. But okay, maybe they fixed it because that's not too bad. But I know why, because there's no cars in here. So that's why. Tick, tick, tick. There we go. So yeah, loading time should be a bit more now with all the cars. One eternity later. Let's get driving. Oh! Wait, hang on a minute. I had my emergency stop pressed down. I was thinking there's no force feedback, but that was my fault. Hundred and forty FPS. So the hypercars, they come out with, like last year in WEC, they didn't have tyre warmers. And um, you really feel it. Like, that was the one thing I noticed. In R-Factor 2, if you had cold tyres, usually it was quicker. Whereas in this, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not the case. Because the, there was basically no grip when I was on cold tyres. But yeah, the feel... We'll go through my force feedback settings later, but it's, it's 
I didn't drive a hyper car in R Factor 2, but it's very similar. It does feel very similar. Um, obviously, it's very similar, or basically the same tracks as well. But I love the the HUD and the overlays. I think they look really good. Quite modern. Like, I really like this one as well. The got all the tire temps, brake temps, but they're live as well. So I, I do like that. Also, one thing I like about this car is you can see. I don't know if you can see it on your screen because you've got a smaller aspect ratio, but you can see the wheels moving in the arches. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, you got this page here for strategy and stuff. It's got like a fuel calculator, which is quite cool. Don't really see them in built into the games, usually. Driver aids. You can actually change the roll bar in this car on the, on the go. Brake, brake bias, brake migration. I think that's for the recharge. And then motor map. Regen level, so there's a lot to get involved with here. And a lot to practice. I'm obviously on default setup as well, so it's a little bit understeery. The AI in this session as well are on the max, so it'd be good to see actually how quick they are. behind it. It's just a Cadillac. There's one HUD, little bit of HUD you can't see. It's behind my webcam and it's uh, it's a lap time thing. It just shows current lap and then best lap and a delta as well. So you can't actually see the live delta at the minute, which is unfortunate, but I can't actually move the HUD around. I can't customise it at the minute. But they did say that that was going to be something they'll fix. But yeah, physics, honestly, they feel alright. They feel really good, to be fair. Like They didn't initially when I loaded up the game yesterday. Oh! I've got the AI aggression on Max as well. But that's the thing, yeah, when I first loaded the game up, it did not feel great at all. But once I've got everything sort of set up and there, it feels kind of nice, to be honest. Got a lot of detail coming through on curbs, bumps. It's got a nice progressive feel when I turn into the corners. Um, I think it, it does feel slightly different to our factor because I think the tyre model might be slightly different because... As I say, in our factor, it was always the colder the tyres, the better, really. And on this, it seems to have a more of a window-based uh, temp window, like on ACC, where there's a minimum you want to be above and then a maximum you want to be under in terms of temperature. So, I haven't driven iRacing GTP, but I drove the LMP2 yesterday, and it's it's not it's not that similar to iRacing, to be honest. It's, it's definitely our factor. If you want to compare it to anything, our factor 2. So understeering. Herbs are very aggressive. That's one thing I did think yesterday. The track limits there. That's probably a good time to sort this brake pressure out and delve into the setup very quickly. That's what we got here. All right, let's take some fuel out. That's the other thing as well, is these bloody... This is buggy, like, and annoying. Like, I'm not, it's not really doing anything. That, that is quite annoying. Brake pressure. Let's go down to 85%. 
Yeah, so if you look in the setup, those of you that know R Factor 2, it's very similar in terms of what you've got here. It's so like Packers, you don't really see that in too many different games apart from R Factor. I wonder if the same things apply where you want. That's already on minimum tire pressure, but Max Camber. Start next session, there we go. Get into a quick quali, five minute quali, which is probably one lap. And then into a. It's a one hour race, but we're not going to complete it. We'll just do the start in the first few laps. I would take the fuel out, but it looks like it could take quite a while with this buggy UI. This is long. That's what she said. <laughs> I can't be asked. Right click. No way. Dude, this is why I love Twitch chat. I mean, they just, I just learn all the time. That's not enough fuel there. And I can't be asked to change anything else in a minute. a pit lane speeding penalty. Oh my god, we might not even make it round to be fair. But to be fair, it doesn't really matter. We probably want to start from the back anyway. It'd be funner. So let's play around with these motor map. That's so going to save us battery, I guess. So regen should give us maximum battery recharging. And then when we go into the quality lap, we'll probably want to... Why would you want to have the regen off, though? You get more braking performance. Are we going to make the line? I think we're close, I think. I don't think we are, though. No! It's all good though. Start from the back is going to be fun. Ah, oh, it's a full rolling lap, is there? And we've not got enough fuel. Do you know what? I'm not even going to do that much. So let's just take this fuel. We'll just do a couple of laps, and then we'll we'll have a look at the online mode or look at the wet. Virtual energy for the pit stop. Interesting. What's virtual energy? AI are on maximum skill level, maximum aggression. So we might get dusted here, but that's all good. Virtual energy is a combined amount of fuel and hybrid power you can use during a stint. Looks like we'll need to get some temp into the tyres as well. With there being no tyre warmers. Oh, what a long outlap. Oh, we can skip it. We can skip it. That's good. So what I'm going to need to do then is put this on maximum. Actually, no, 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 because that might... Backspace. Yeah. Okay. Right, tyres are going to be stone cold, man. Green, green, let's go. Oh! Chaos. Yeah, they're super aggressive. Oh my god. Oh my god. Holy. Yeah, look at that Corvette. Oh damn. This is a really mixed up grid. Holy shit. So with all these cars, I'm on 100 FPS. Green flag, let's oh. go. Wow.
bay, these AI. What is that? <laughs> Fucking hell. For the sake of enjoyment, I'm turning that AI aggression all the way down, man. Just to make them jump out of the way. Uh, contact model. Um, well, I'm starting to get used to that now, getting absolutely nailed by these AIs, but again, if you've ever played R Factor 2, it seems exactly the same as that. Green flag, let's go. Wow, the difference in the grip, like, they literally just jump out of the way. Oof. What a move from that Porsche. Damn. Mate. It's like I'm in an LMP2. They've just checked out. Oh, brutal. Oh, there we go. Too much recovery mode. I don't know, but that first gear just killed me there. Yeah, I think I've got invulnerability turned. Oh my god, the rear of this thing is an absolute death trap. Or the brake pressure's too high again, but it's more rearward with the bias, so maybe it's just locking. Oh my god. I think 100% AI might be too hard. No, they're not 100% they're max so they're like mate he's meant to be on 29 aggression yeah this max AI is definitely way too cracked I'd say this would be really tough on a controller to be honest oh my god look at the speed of this perfect holy shit Oh my god. Yeah, this this car is an absolute mess under braking and downshifting. What an experience that was. Um, starts in 22 minutes. Prototype fixed at Algarve. Got 17 minutes then until this race. So let's see how good Algarve is. Doesn't really rev that high. Just sounds a bit dead. What is that? Did you see that? Oh! Yeah, damage is on. See, that was an R-Factor thing right there where the noise bugged. 
I think the fact it's got an online work, a, a working online race system already. I think, to be honest, for 25 quid, it's worth buying. Like, I, yeah, I've, I've, it's worth saying as well. I can say what I want right now, right? I can say it's shit, but I think generally, like, it looks good. It feels pretty good the way I've got it set up now. For 25 quid. That scared the shit out of me. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's not bad. I, I'm gem I genuinely am saying that as well. It's. I feel like there's a lot of potential here. Um, if they, if they get it right, if they continue to develop at the rate of knots that everyone will want them to, I feel like this has got a lot of potential. Right, are we gridding up now? Are we? This might reset everything. How long's the race actually? Does anyone know? 16 minutes. What about fuel then? Let's just go 53. Got 30 seconds. How much am I fueling up here? I don't know if what I've got is enough, but oh well, who actually cares? We'll soon see. We'll soon see. Right, when's he going to go then? Oh, GPU is going a bit crazy. Those black things coming back again. Green, green, let go. Oh no. It's only a 16 minute race, we're well over fueled, man. To be fair, some of you in chat did say that, but some other people were saying 37 minutes. Move on here. Ooh. Just a little boink. Where's the, oh, where's the best place to overtake, chat? What are we thinking? Yeah. 
bit dirty, yeah. T1. Ooh, there the graphics that thing's happening again. The black. We went wide. Might get a run here. Definitely feel that dirt, yeah. Here. Well, we'll watch that back, but I thought I was up the inside there, but. Really do with the radar right now. Or triples, one of the two. I might have been a bit too nice there, but we'll. Oh, we can't even check it after, can we? Because there's no replay function. But there is also the chance that he just turned in on me there, but I don't know. Hard to say. Squeezing me. All right, I'm going to start being addicted to him now. Because he just squeezed me. Big fat lock up there as well. To, to be fair, he probably didn't know I was alongside him, to be fair, but oh well. This has been very enjoyable. To be fair, apart from the GPU looking like it's about to explode. There we go. Is he going to hit me here? Nah, fair enough. Good race, Mr. Andonovsky. It's got some glitches, it's got some bugs, but so far like that race there I really enjoyed that it was cool felt nice like it's an early access man you can't I can't go cursing at the fact that it glitches here and there is the game gonna crash here though no okay it's always a it's always a bonus oh my safety rank didn't go up this uh yeah now you don't have to start with LMP2 um it was just the race that was going on then. So, so these are these gameplay settings right here. Exactly the same as I have them in R Factor 2, to be fair. Controls, basic stuff. Map the buttons you want. Force speed, dash calibration. I don't run any dead zones or anything in game. I always do that in the profilers. Uh, use the steering range from the vehicle you're driving. I turn all the head movement off. I didn't really touch these. I think I just left these the way they were. Uh, secondary input, we don't have one. Force feedback. This is this was the main one for me. This was the one that took a, a good while getting my will from when I initially loaded into a game to literally, it was trying to rip my arms off my hands. I had to press this one to stop that happening and then to get it to actually feel good uh, I ended up with these settings here so 
feels very similar to R Factor for the most part. I think the main one was this one. So I run a direct drive wheel and it says here, do not use on direct drive wheels. So I turned it to zero, but that caused me so many issues. I, I couldn't feel anything going down the straights or when the wheel was straight, I couldn't feel anything. But then in high speed corners, I could feel a lot, like too much. So keep that on 100, whatever wheel you're running, I think it's probably your best bet. Uh, graphics. See, I'm not max graphics, but I'm not on lowest either. Then, uh, yeah, all these are pretty much on high, the high preset. And I'm getting around, depending on the track, 90 to 130 FPS. It's all right, I guess, on a widescreen monitor as well, but it could, could do with some optimization, to be fair. On our factor, I get a lot more than that. 36 SOV. FOV. Uh, yeah, all that stuff's pretty basic, really. And then my R Factor profile on Simicube looks like this. So, yeah. I'll show you something funny, right? I tried it yesterday. I tried the Porsche, and the Porsche has got this mental uh, screen for the, like that showing the flags and stuff. Oh my god, man! It makes it undrivable. Right, chat. Look at this screen. But how am I meant to see the first corner? Like, it's just, it's crazy, man. That is absolutely nuts. I, li I literally can't see the corner. Oh yeah, it's not a GT3, it's a GTE, it's no ABS. Can't just stamp the brake pedal. Brakes are better than I'm giving them credit for there. Feels good though. Does feel good. I'm enjoying this. Oh, bumpy, bumpy. Oof. What we got here then? Drizzle, light rain. Overcast, light rain, rain, heavy rain, storm. Yeah, I'll do storm actually, yeah. Try the extremes. Let's try this Toyota. Okay. That's what we're getting here. 100 FPS. I bet the AI are cracked in the wet as well. Puddles don't really seem to be action, like they don't really seem to be puddles. Oh no. Cold brakes in the wet, don't really do much. Clearly on a, a dry setup right now, but still try and tiptoe it around. Might get easier as we get heat into the tyres. I mean, these are literally the worst conditions you can get on the game, so... Nah, I don't think wet lines are the way to go. I think it's still dry lines.
not feeling any difference in grit offline or online, to be honest. Oh, no grit, man. I honestly can't feel much right now. There's no FFB. It's just like the R factor rain physics, basically. Oh dear. But with a better setup, probably is still very enjoyable. That's a good point, actually. I've not even thought about the wipers. Yeah, I mean, this isn't that fun, to be fair. You know, barely any FFB coming through the wheel on a dry setup. But you'd have to work at it to make it a nice experience. You know, develop the setup and turn the force feedback up a bit. And... But this is definitely, like in Ren Sport, to be fair, a later version of Spa, an updated one. Which I should see would update theirs now. Oh, a purple in the middle. Lap 2, 22.90. P1. The AI are washed in the wet. Let's go. Let's have a good race. So we're waiting for the indicator to say go, 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 not when P1 goes. We were in the wrong gear last time, weren't we? So for those who don't know, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people do, Michi Hoya is the official test driver, I think, for Le Mans Ultimate. So he's a good benchmark. I'm pretty sure he knows this game more than most. So you can see that, because he's rapid. Staying with him. It's a good sign. As we found out earlier, it's very difficult to overtake around it. Horrible. 
slipstream's not enough, to be honest. Didn't make any move up here. I mean, it's probably realistic, but. Still not close enough though. See the dirty air there? I was closer and it pushed me wide a bit more. There's nothing I can do, man. Last lap? No, there's two more. Fucking hell, I've just got enough fuel. We're going to get a penalty there. That yet. Didn't have a track limit to use up either. We didn't have a lot of fuel left there, that was perfect on the fuel. 
Wow, that was good fun. It looks really good, man. Apart from that stupid black graphics thing that happens, it does look really good. Night time. Oh, damn. FPS is significantly lower here. Holy shit. I've got 70 FPS right now. So it's taking about 40. Having, having it at night. Oh, you can see it as well. It's definitely a bit frame rate. Three, two. Green flag, let's go. go. Sixty FPS. Oh God! I haven't got my headlights on. Walk up. Uh, this box next lap, just to see what a pit stop looks like. Pit request. Have I got a pit request button? Oh, that's my camera. Lap one twenty eight point zero eight. Let's change new soft, new soft. There's the driver thing, but that doesn't work at the minute. You can't actually change drivers. At the minute. Box, box, box. Sixty Ks. Where are we then? Time one thirty. Same as our factor. Nine point eight three. No pit crew or anything. Max fuel six seconds. Tires twenty seconds. I love the sounds like of the cars going. But that sounds really realistic. Twenty-six seconds, probably. Right, let's do a few more laps here, just to lap some traffic and stuff. Oh dear. So unpredictable on the cold tyres. Speed differential is mental, man. Yeah, the AI are a bit crazy and like that braking zone there, how has that GTE outbraked me? I like the f the way the cars look in the in the mirror though. Like really their headlights are proper like blinding you, because that's how it is. If we're gonna sum it up then, overall thoughts, which requires thinking. 
I think it's a solid enough start. It's a good base, a good foundation, but I'm only going to rate it 6 out of 10 probably. It's not horrendous, but there are loads of issues. If you really want to get a good description of what it feels like and what it is to sort of play, it's R Factor 3. You know, it's a very nice step on from R Factor 2. Feels very, very similar. Driving style very similar. The settings that are in there that are very unique to our fact that you don't really see them in other games, again, very similar. Setups look the same as well. Not sure if the same sort of metas in the setup or the setups exist, but I'm going to guess they do. The UI and the overlays that are in the game are a big step up, I think, from our factor, which is a good tick. Studio 397, I think they need to be, as they say they will be, but I think they need to be like shit hot on fixing bugs, fixing things ASAP, getting more modes into the game as well. There's not really that much to do at the minute. So apart from offline race weekend and online, there's nothing else to do. I mean, the online system's good, but there's not a great deal there that's going to keep people coming back. So needs to get more game modes in. But when you think of it like ACC started off in a very similar fashion five, six years ago, and look where it is now, the official game for the GT World Challenge Europe. And basically every SRO series in the world that exists, it, ACC is the game for that. It, this could be the same thing, but for WEC. Well, I think that's the idea of it. And that concept is very good. It just needs to be nailed it needs to be done well and there's a lot of potential i'm excited because i think it could work uh having an official game for WEC, constantly delivering new content for it like the new cars any new tracks they go to it's a good concept and it's a good concept for esports as well obviously le mans virtual used to exist back in the day hasn't been around for a, about a year now just over a year so hopefully there's some esports like that on this new game le mans ultimate overall you can see this is quite hard for me because I have to think. I don't like doing that. So one final thought, just for you lot as well, because I saw it in my Twitch chat and it got me thinking. First of all, what is early access? And is it the game developers getting the community to steer it in the right direction so that the community are happy with it because the game developers listen to them and over an extended period of time, the game's been crafted into exactly what the community wants? Is it that or is it the developers getting free testing by the people who are gonna play it. I thought it was a very good argument. I've never really thought of it like that before. And I think um, it could be a bit of both, but I wanna see your thoughts down in the comments below. So please get down there. And if you did enjoy the video overall, give it a thumbs up. If you really enjoyed it, sub to the channel. But that is me done for today. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Goodbye.